The most common type of question that I get is regarding paint brushes. And so that's why in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top 10 favorite paint brushes that can quite literally allow you to paint anything. And we're gonna start with the liner brush. When it comes to this small pointed brush, for me, there's only one thing that comes to mind, and that's signing my work. When it's time to add my signature at the end, I need something that handles like a pen, is comfortable in my hand, produces sharp, accurate results, and the liner brush fits all of those needs perfectly. It can require a little bit of extra effort to produce very good results with acrylics, but with oils, because they flow so easily, you can produce very sharp and accurate results, and it makes my signature really stand out in the end. Aside from that, I don't use a liner brush for much of anything anymore. Now, speaking of thin lines, this beauty is a beast. This is the Dagger Striper brush from Princeton, and this is one of my all-time favorite brushes. By using the sharp bladed edge, we can produce amazing blending effects with ease. And this is with acrylics. With oils, it's even better. Rotate the brush a quarter turn and it produces some of the most amazing lines, even more stunning than a liner or rigger brush can do. The curvature of the brush allows you to scoop up a lot of paint and lay down some very beautiful, thick, expressive brushwork the type of brushwork that has a very natural and non-repetitive feel. Flip the brush upside down and you can create some of the smallest details that your heart desires. And the curved shape also allows you to rotate the brush as you work to create some very unique strokes, almost like smoke or fire. The next brush is the round blender brush. Now this brush is great for creating very rounded blends. The brush is very soft like a mop brush, but has a lot of bounce and pull that allows you to move the paint easily on the canvas, which can add up for some flawless blending. And when you move down to the smaller size, it allows for this flawless blending to be applied with extreme precision. I use this brush all the time when I'm trying to create blur effects. It allows you to create a range of focal blurs and seamlessly tie those two together so that you can get those smooth, buttery bouquets transitioning into that sharp foreground detail. The next two brushes are my round brushes. I always have one small and sharp and one large and soft round brush. The small and sharp creates some very nice line work, much similar to a liner brush or a dagger striper, but it lacks the control. However, the advantage to this brush is that it has a thicker body, more hairs, thus it can hold more paint. So it allows you to take each brush stroke further without having to go back and pick up more as you work. It creates beautiful rounded textures and patterns and allows you to get in really close for that detail work as well. So it's also quite a versatile brush. When it comes to signing my work, you can see that it just doesn't live up to the liner. Having a larger and more softened round brush is very useful in my work as well. I can use the soft end to pat my way across the canvas to create a very sporadic and unique texture, something that looks very non-repetitive and natural. And it also allows me to blend in a very similar way to the round blenders, except for with this brush, because of its smaller size, I have much more control and much more precision. This brush is excellent for the portions of your painting that you wanna add detail to without going overboard that will then end up distracting from your main subject. The next two brushes in my arsenal are my angular brushes. Now these are essentially just flat brushes with a chiseled angle. I love having a flat brush with an angled asymmetrical design as it provides more versatility. In addition to the benefits of a regular flat brush, I can rotate it to create some unique results. This is truly the workhorse of my collection, as I paint most large areas of the canvas with this, as well as do the majority of my blocking in with it. When it comes to the smaller version, I get the same great benefits, but on a tighter, more precise scale. And the best part about this brush, the older it gets, the more unique types of patterns you can create with it. Now let's not forget about the fan brushes. I have two different types of fan brushes, one very large, 
fan blender made from natural bristle, and the other is synthetic and much smaller. The small synthetic brush allows me to create those sweet Bob Ross pine boughs, as well as rotate it to create a variety of patterns and textures. You can even load it irregularly, add more paint to one side of the brush to create some artistic and creative effects. With the larger fan, I only have one purpose, and that's blending. This brush is a blending master. You can use the width of it and the stiffness of it to push and pull the paint, which creates seamless blends on a very large scale. Use the brush to pat to create a little bit of texture in any of those blends. Now when it comes to starting my paintings, especially if it's on a larger scale, I use a one inch bright. Now this one inch bright has one purpose and one purpose alone, and that's coverage. I use it for blocking in any initial stages of the painting where I need to fill in large areas. Now last but not least is my one and a half inch flat brush. This brush is a specialty brush for me. I don't use it for painting. I use it solely for varnishing my work at the end. When I'm varnishing my paintings, I want something very stiff, something I can scrub the canvas with and really get that varnish worked into it. And this one for that does a fantastic job. So when it comes to the brushes that I use, whether I'm working on realistic feather detail in my wildlife art, whether I'm trying to show depth and atmosphere in my dramatic landscapes, or whether I'm adding the light shining through a soft, warm sunset. These brushes are all I need. If I had to pick one, it would be the Dagger Striper. If I had to pick two, it would be the Large Bright. And if I had to pick three, it would be the Small Angular. One for detail and precision, one for coverage and blocking in, and one for precise blending and texture work. Thank you so much for watching. All the links for these brushes are in the description. And if you're looking for more demonstration with these brushes, the longer version of this video is available through my channel memberships. That's all I have for today. We'll see you next time.